Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about autoimmune disease. I had a very interesting week last week with two patients coming into the clinic. One was a gentleman who had been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called scleroderma, and this had occurred seven years prior. Um, he was diagnosed with this disease. He started noticing um, peeling at the tips of his fingertips. Scleroderma is a disease that affects the skin. It can also uh, affect the organs. It, it hardens tissues. And uh, initially he was diagnosed. He um, wasn't really told to do anything. He kind of figured there was nothing to do. And here it is seven years later. He's having trouble breathing. And it's uh, being thought that he needs a lung transplant. And the prognosis is not very good. So a little bit of a sad story. Um, the second story is of a woman who um, is in her late 40s, early 50s, uh, has been very healthy her entire life, uh, went on vacation to Ecuador. And um, when she came back, she got sick and continued to get ill, feeling just exhausted, uh, in pain, and literally could not get out of bed for two months. She sought out doctors. Uh, the only thing that they came up with was um, a bacterial infection. They tried to treat her for it. She only lasted two days on, on the medication and got so ill she stopped it and now, many months later, is also diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. So what's in common about these two individuals? Certainly the story sounds very, very different. Um, the status of autoimmune disease in this country is that it is doubling every 15 years and has been for the last 75 years. Now certainly there is a genetic component associated with autoimmune disease, meaning you have to have a predisposing gene. Um, it is thought to develop the various diseases. And we also know that if you have one autoimmune disease, your chances of getting another very much increase. But with the doubling every 15 years, uh, it's uh, proposed that it's an environmental issue that has changed, not so much that genes have changed because they don't tend to alter themselves that quickly. Now, Dr. Fasano, um, last year, he's out of the University of Maryland, um, he uh, published in clinical reviews in, I'm looking down at my notes here, excuse me, uh, clinical reviews in allergy and immunology is the name of the journal he published last, last year. And um, he did research on autoimmune disease. He has been doing research on autoimmune disease, but uh, this most recent paper last year uh, was very exciting because in addition to animal studies that he had been doing uh, back from the mid-2000s, uh, 2007, 2006, um, he now had clinical studies with humans, and he r really made the statement that for prevention as well as arresting autoimmune disease, what we need to do is look to the small intestine, look to the gut, which is something um, I completely concur with, uh, something we said in The Gluten Effect, which we published back in 2009. We have found this clinically to be very workable as well. And it kind of only makes sense if you look at the fact, um, what I'd like to do now is sort of uh, look at the mechanism of autoimmune disease, because um, you're looking at an immune system that's sort of out of control. It's attacking somebody's body. Uh, with the scleroderma, as we mentioned, it's attacking the skin. With celiac disease, it's attacking the small intestine. With type 1 diabetes, it's attacking the pancreas, on and on. So what happens is that the, we know the immune system's out of control. Uh, we supposedly don't know why, but I think we're, we're starting to understand. Um, but if you look at where 80% of the immune system is housed, it's housed in your small intestine. So it does make sense, right, to look there first. And sure enough, that's what uh, Dr. Fasano is saying. And as I said, I completely concur. So the small intestine is very, very interesting because it, it allows the flow of, of certain things um, and not the flow of other things, meaning that uh, food is taken in by the mouth, it's broken down, and it's the small intestine that, that allows the passage or the trafficking of, of broken down food to, to then leave the small intestine, go out into the bloodstream, and fuel your cells, which is what eating is all about, okay, as far as it's like putting gas in your car, you want to fuel up those cells. 
However, there are certain organisms we may ingest or come our way, whether it's parasites or bacteria or maybe some kind of toxic food particles that a healthy immune system and a healthy small intestine will forbid the passage of them. So it's a little bit um, like there's a gatekeeper system and the gate can close when there's a bad guy and open when there's a good guy. So there's an intelligence there that's very, very fascinating. And what Dr. Fasano's work looked at is the fact that when that gatekeeper system is working correctly, then um, that's the way to potentially prevent and treat uh, autoimmune disease because what happens is as long as those molecules can stay within the gut, then they're not getting out into the bloodstream and, and, and getting out into the system and then uh, causing an attack on, on other organs of the body. Now certainly celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease, is a little bit of a um, different situation because it's doing its damage right at the at the small intestine. So in that particular case, you, you literally have to stop bringing that bad guy into the body because its, it's attack is, is right at the point of the small intestine itself. But celiac aside, uh, what we're looking at is the fact that we do have an intelligence and a brilliance of that small intestine that when it's functioning the way it should will prevent these bad guys from getting out into the system and that is a way to look at really preventing and treating potentially um, maybe reversing autoimmune disease. So um, this gentleman with scleroderma, if he had been treated right away, would it have gone to his lungs? Uh, this woman who obviously picked up some sort of a, an infection in Ecuador, if that had been really handled right away and, and her small intestine rehealed so that it wasn't too permeable, we call that a leaky gut, uh, would she now have an autoimmune disease? I mean, hard, hard to say 100%, but it's, it's you makes you wonder, right? So um, I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail, research-based, uh, also explained by me uh, with my experience that um, this huge increase that we're seeing with autoimmune disease, I feel we could really make a dent in preventing that by understanding this and, and really seeking out clinicians that understand this so that those of you suffering with autoimmune disease, those of you with a lot of autoimmune disease in the family, um, you can really look to the gut and make sure it's really functioning optimally and, and hopefully prevent or uh, arrest the progress of your autoimmune disease. So uh, please let me know if this was informative, if you have any questions or comments. I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.